you are listening to the Spine Whisperers podcast. Please know that our doctors are here to only educate, not diagnose on this podcast. If you have any questions, please feel free to find us at www.mfwellness.org. Dr. Matt, we're back. Dr. Josh, Dr. Brad, we're all here. What's up, Truth? And we're going to be talking to you about the different tests that we do here at the yeah. office regarding it's, it's metrics po- day. postural awareness yeah. and what our goals are for you and what your goals should be for yourself. <laughs> we're starting to look at 2023. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The, um, you know, we, we scream and scream about um, changes in posture and why it matters and subluxation in the spine, arthritis. And uh, man, the last the last decade has been so good to the chiropractic profession in terms of the research that's been done and how we can improve people's functional assessments. But nobody can talk about that because COVID takes all the air out of the room. And when we start talking about this white paper that we wrote or this research we looked at, it people's eyes glaze over because it's like, oh God, they're going to talk about COVID. But we are not talking about COVID. What we are going to talk about today is how we're implementing trackable functional improvement. So I want to talk about that for just a second. If you've got a hangover, you have pain, right? And a slight decrease in function. Right. But a lot of people prior to having maybe a heart attack or something more serious happen, they're not in pain in the three seconds before that happens. You know, then it happens and they're in pain. So pain is not the best indicator of whether or not you're healthy. So what we've always been striving to do and prove for our patients is like, okay, how are you functionally better now that we take care of you? And one of the ways, well, a couple of the ways we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how we document your improving functional ability. And I'm going to talk about arthritis at the end because I've gotten in fights on the internet, which I shouldn't do, but I've been getting in in fights with people uh, because there is this antiquated idea about osteoarthritic change out there. And it, it just needs to stop. It's a disservice to patients. Are people so, trolling you or are you trolling them? I'm trolling them. So I'm on the, there's a bunch of different forums. And um, you go on the- Chiropractic Reddit? Yeah. The chiropractic forums, the physical therapy forums, the occupational forums, and then the ask doctors, the medical doctors forum, which I should know I should just never go on, but I go I on there. I wonder why you come in here in a good mood. I'm just so pissed. I'm like, just so <laughs> mad. And it's like, you should be able to have a discussion on the internet with people like, hey, Here's look at this research, and they don't even want to see it. They don't even care. They're like, nope, nope, it's placebo. And I'm like, okay, well, this is a functional change documented on a by an AI, Max Planck, when he was developing his black box theories with Niels Bohr, and right before he paved the way for the atomic bomb, he talked about all the people that were in the way for the atomic bomb and a- atomic energy, and he said. Science advances one funeral at a time. And what he was talking about was that scientists, once they have a theory, once they have a thing that they're getting paid for or what their their life's work, they will go to the grave defending that thing, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. And that is what's happening with the chiropractic profession. We have all this overwhelming care and you have people out there that are like, oh, no, it doesn't work at all. There's a million adjustments given a day. And they're like, oh, no, can't possibly work. And they just have no idea. So anyway, I won't get on that topic. What I want to talk about first is we're using our grip strength. So we talked about the dynamometer a while ago, right? We had a podcast yeah. on it. And then you did yeah. an Instagram a little on video, it. Yeah. yeah. Short yeah. videos on it. Yeah. yeah. So your ability to squeeze, you know, a lot of things have to line up right for you to squeeze. And if something's wrong... You know, like uh, if you ever had the flu, you know, you're like, oh, you just can't even, you can't even open a can. You know, you have trouble turning a doorknob. You feel weak. You still have the same amount of muscle, but you can't utilize that muscle. And that's because there are specific hormones and then, you know, just free blood glucose that isn't available to you because your body's fighting off an infection. Well, to a much lesser extent, that happens daily. You know, you get hit in the head with a wiffle ball. You know, you have a meeting you really don't want to go to. Those things are trackable with grip strength. And so sleep, yeah. You know, nutrition. Oh my gosh! Oh uh, my yeah. gosh! Now there's there's studies out there on yeah the yeah. correlation between all that. Yeah. yeah, and so we're blessed here to have Dr. Brad, Dr. Professor Brad. So when he's not here, he's down in Maryville. He has a whole 
not a human performance lab. What's it called? Yeah. It yeah, is human, human performance, performance lab, yeah. Which is like, if you, look, if you're into getting every ounce out of your body, out of optimizing your health, like that's what that's what Dr. Brad does in the off in his off time, which is just crazy to me. And so he brings that to this office. Yeah, and one I died in my yeah, literally cover in, in our biomechanics course. And then our strength coach uses that to test, I'm sure, pretty much every athletic team that Absolutely. he tests, they, they do a grip strength test along with everything else. Yeah. And so we do it here. And so you come in, you, your neck hurts, this is going on, that's going on. You're going to squeeze something, you know. And then we look at those numbers. Then we adjust you. We do whatever therapies are appropriate. Then you do it again. Now you have functionally gained grip strength. We have some people that are squeezing. I got a guy last week, 23 pounds more with his right hand. And then there was a woman uh, as well, also 15, 20 pounds more. So now it's like, are you out of pain? Okay, great. Now you can squeeze like Thor. Like that's what we're talking about when we talk about it. So all of our maintenance patients, we squeeze test them four times a year. We try to anyway because a, a, a supply chain is such a disaster. But we squeeze test them regularly because we want to make sure their function is improving. People who are getting very sick or they're getting close to a mortality type of a deal, all of those people have a significant loss in grip strength. It's well documented um, in what's called the all-cause mortality. If anybody ever wants to look it up, all-cause mortality. Grip strength is one of the indicators of that. And so we test it here. It's a... It's a Easily repeatable test. It's a machine. It's an objective measurement. So it's not the doctor screwing it up. And so that's one of the things that we bring to the table. And I just want everybody to be aware of that. Like it's fun to squeeze stuff, but it has a profound implication in terms of your overall health and how good of a job we're doing here. You know, when we tell people we're going to see you every week or we're going to see you twice a month, the reason why we're doing that is because based on all the tests we've run and what you're doing with ergonomics, how bad you were hurt when you came to us, what your outcome assessment, you know, goals are, all of that factors in how often we see people. Well, that's why. Like, And uh, addendum to that is you have one body. Mm. You have one life to truly, you know, to get it right. And if you're doing the things that we're telling you to do, you're going to see the best outcome measures that you can possibly have. Mm. Besides that's working it. out, besides nutrition... Besides, you know, cervical traction and wobble chair, getting up and stretching every hour, like all these things. The reason why we keep telling you these things is because we want you to have the best life experience. That's it. And that's that's what you pay us for. That's right. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, out of pain, fine. But now you can hit the ball out of the park again. You're hitting your drives a million miles. You're playing frisbee with the kids. That's living, man. Pain, fine. Like, okay. But like, can you, can you float trip this weekend? Okay. Now we're talking. We have all the answers. Yeah. And if we don't have all the answers, we know where to find them That's it, or man. where to send you. That's it. So the second thing that we've added, um, and we added it early on, but we ran out of materials. Now it's back. is pulmonary function. So how much air you can move in one second and how much total air you can move are very important measurements for people with COPD, like asthma. But also, it's well documented that people whose head posture is changing, their head's coming forward, that head is going to be lodged over the lungs, and so you can't move air as easily because the trachea isn't lined up right, and you can't move as much air. This is a really big deal because it changes the oxygenation of your blood and the amount of fresh, clean, red blood that's getting up to your up the carotids and into your skull. It's a big, big deal. And now we have the means to test this in the office. Well, we did in the beginning, then we ran out of the disposable, but now the supply chain has rewarded us. We have like 120, I think. If you want to do a quick test, bring your chin to your chest, roll your shoulders forward, and try to take a deep breath in. Right. You can't. It's very difficult to take a deep breath. Okay. Now, on the other hand, bring your head back just a little bit. Now, bring your shoulders back. Now, turn your thumbs out. And now, take a deep breath. You can physically feel the difference of taking a deep breath in. Yeah. And that's just of a quick assessment. Right. So this pulmonary function, like we're testing your lungs. How much can you breathe out? Yeah. How much can you, like what's your exchange factor? These are the things that we're yeah, testing it's like with. Objective, it's yeah. on our iPad. Yeah. Boom, we get the numbers right away. It's liters per second and liters per minute, you know, and it is stupid good. And so lo and behold, we're fixing people. They come in, their hands are numb, their grip strength's weak, their pulmonary function is terrible. 
we move their bones around, and all of a sudden they're t- they're moving more air, and that is a functional improvement. You know, it's a quality of life, not just out of pain, but like overall, you're functioning better. That's a huge deal. There are so many new studies coming out linking head position with obviously arthritis at the base of the neck, but secondary to that, it changes in anxiety. Like there are. There was a great study out of Harvard where they called, it was called the Power Pose Study. And one of the psychologists there was like, hey, let's, we have people stand up into the, what they call power poses, head back, shoulders back up. And then um, they had them assume these poses and hold them for you know a minute or two minutes. And then they had them make decisions. And one of the things was a, a poker game. And uh, there was these really interesting changes, so much so that it really set the psychological world, not ablaze, of course, but it really got people talking about the position of the human body and how it affects the brain. And that information is, is really getting coalesced right now. But the bigger deal is for like people here in St. Charles, you being able to move air out of your body and moving air in is going to change the rest of your life. And so we measure that on our patients. It's really easy to do. You just have you breathe into a disposable spirometer that we then throw away. You know, the only downside is it's a wide open spirometer. So people are thinking about like a kazoo is the similar thing. But it makes a stupid sound like a kazoo, so it's a no eye contact test. So we don't make we don't make eye contact with you during this test. Like, yeah, I sit there and look away, and I tell them like this is going to be stupid, but the numbers are incredible. And then we graph it, and bam, we got it. And so it's it's really cool, especially for our maintenance patients. You know, we have people we've been taking care of for years and years, and they're moving liters more air, you know, over the course of a minute than they were when we started just this year. It's really neat. And then um, the last thing is posture. So I, I read a really cool study where they were talking about the human spine is a, is a big experiment. There's no other animal out there that uses a pendulum style anatomical structure. So right, so it, it's not as the spine isn't a straight line up. You know, you look for somebody from the side, you know, there's a curve in the low back and a curve in the neck. We call these the lordosis. And then a corresponding curve in the in the thoracic spine. But the fact that our spine goes forward, back, forward, back, nobody does that but us. And so it's a great experiment. It's the pendulum style, they call it, which is hilarious to think about. Think about a straight line going up your spine. Your spine will deviate to either side. And so we can measure that. We can look at that. And if that isn't in there, then you have a functional change secondary to an anatomical problem. The ergonomics of working at home and then working at the office and then working at home are terrible, especially because of COVID. But the bigger issue is is smartphone usage has gone up and nobody looks up anymore. And you're teaching your brain to look down. In doing that, you're compromising the cervical spine significantly, which wouldn't matter except for all the stuff that runs your body is in your brain. <laughs> and so that head has to be back. You have to have that lordosis in there. And there are studies, um, there's a really good paper that we looked at, we didn't include for this particular talk, but the amount of degeneration in the base of the neck following forward head posture is significant, you know, and turning off degeneration is very difficult to do. You know, it can be done, but it's difficult to do. And so one of the things we measure on everybody, we whip out that iPad and we have an AI, like an artificial intelligence program that is designed to look at the spine, look for landmarks on the body, and it makes a bunch of marks on you while you just stand there. It is, it's really neat. Yeah, we have a lot more measurements we could do because oh we, we've been doing the posture screen for what six years a long time and now uh, recently they've added That's new right. markings that can give us just even more detail and it's just machine learning like yeah. the machine just had to get four million assessments and now it's like oh okay and so they download posture for the company re-downloads that material based on the stuff that they've learned so it's it's stupid cool right and we used to do the two view uh-huh. you know, side and front and now a lot of the ones that we're going to do in the future are side, both sides, front and back, yeah. to get a, just a full idea of what you your got, overall you, posture is. Yeah, you got numbers everywhere. It's yeah. just numbers, numbers, numbers. And it's, um, it's really neat because for us, we can document how much better you are than when we started. And we can do it repeatedly, we can do it easily, and we do it without the doctor screwing it up. And so not having a human touch it is a big deal. Everybody knows you go into your doctor's office, your medical office, and the person taking your height is like, forget it. That's never right. And then somebody else comes in, totally different answer. Third guy comes in, totally different answer. We don't screw around with that here. Here, we use sonar. So we bounce a beam off your skull. It's always right. You know, and so that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Not having humans touching stuff 
Um, that's the way to get the best possible data. And so these three tests for our maintenance, for everybody, but mostly for our maintenance patients, we are making sure we are digitally guaranteeing that you are getting better. And we do that through function. And so that's something that I just wanted to talk about for a little bit because we've been adding this in. We got all these papers coming out that we're writing papers left and right. Um, but I just want the people to know, like, we are so psychotic about making sure that you're better than when you came in. Long, long after you're out of pain, we're going to make sure that you're better than you've ever been. Yeah, the um, the craniocervical angle and and the posture screen, when we go through your treatment plan and we're like, this is what you need to do, you know, we talk about traction, we talk about uh, wobble chair. There are certain exercises that you will get at some point when you're here. Yep. You'll get phase one cervical traction, and then you'll start getting three exercises that we kind of hone in on. One of them is the postural awareness exercise was just stand up nice and tall, approximate the top of your skull to the ceiling or to the sky, right. and then bring your shoulders down, and then turn your thumbs out. And that basically resets a lot of those postural muscles. The other exercise is basically give yourself a turkey neck. But you're going to stand up nice and tall. You're going to bring your chin in and back. Not up or down, but in and back. And you'll kind of make yourself have a double chin. But that's where we start training deep neck flexors. And from that position, we go left and right. But all these exercises that we give you, it's designed to help bring your head back over your chest and your chest back over your heels. Because we want you nice and tall. We want your curves to be supported. And some people, you know, you've had compensation, you have all this stuff going on. That's what we're here for. Free up those adhesions, put your body back where it's supposed to be. Um, the last thing I want to talk about just for a second is, is the current thought process on osteoarthritis. So there is no book out there that can document osteoarthritic change start to finish. Like, like oh, okay, these chemicals come and then the bones change and this happens. You know, it's a joint change, but it's not a joint disease. So these people saying degenerative joint disease... They are out of the loop. The best and brightest, you know, even in medicine, there's a big deal right now on what to call the change inside the joints that's secondary to improper pressure on the joints. And so what we, our best guess as of this summer, some of the best papers talk about a chronic low-level irritation. So it's not some big explosion in your shoulder. It's your shoulder not working right because of two or three misalignments or your spine for a long period of time. And that's what we call subclinical. You don't feel that, but you sure as heck feel that loss in range of motion, which is why we assess that. If you never have those, if you never do it, will you develop arthritic change at that joint? And the answer is no. And so don't listen when you see, like, oh, your arthritis you have to get when you get older. Okay, all over your body? You know, you have no control over it? Of course not. That's ridiculous. But that's the current meta. That's what we're arguing against. And so if you see somebody out there saying that, you can just direct them into here. We'll give them a firm talking to. A firm talking to. So the things that are risk factors for osteoarthritic change. Joint trauma, joint restriction, joint instability, poor ergonomics. A very small percentage of those are hereditary. That's it. That's it. And so we can, we can look for these things, fix them, Right? except for hereditary, we can't do that. And then have a treatment plan for you that helps you avoid this kind of stuff. So it's a pretty hopeful time. If, you, if you're into the spine, um, it has never been a better time to be a human. If you're into the spine, you know, there's a lot we can do. So anyway, that's all I have. I just wanted people to understand like, man, we make it look easy. I hope, I hope we make it look easy. But behind the scenes, we are just going crazy trying to make sure we deliver just an incredible value for your spine and for your health. So that's all that, that's all that I had. Okay. Dr. Brad, anything to add? No, that was great. Yeah. I think, you know, the big thing is just for those of you who are heading into maintenance or maybe you've been in maintenance, but we're getting to the new year, you've been used to getting some of these tests, but just know that we're adding more and more. And like you said, we're, we keep up to date as much as we possibly can on the newest research, the newest equipment that we can get a hold of. Steel. And, uh, Oh yeah, steel. Whatever, whatever has to happen, we're yeah. willing to do it. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have those. Those. Like, Where'd yeah. you get this? Don't worry about yeah. that. That's right. So okay. So for myself, Dr. Matt, Dr. Josh, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Brad, if you have any questions or comments, please email me at drmatt at mfwellness.org. Oh.
R G. All right. Have a good one. Bye. A big thank you goes to Hug Monster Sound for all the hard work they put into making us sound so great.